night all. Like the tower suggests. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to overclock that Ryzen 5 3600. And we're going to be using the ASUS Prime B550M-A Wi-Fi motherboard to do this today. If you'd like to see the build guide on how to put this system together, I'll put a link for it up here for you. But if you haven't seen that video yet, we'll run down the specs of the system and show you exactly what we what makes up the system. Uh, okay, to start out, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, 6 core, boosts up to 4.2 gigahertz. We have the ASUS Prime B550M-A Wi-Fi motherboard. We have G-Skills Drip Jaws 5 series, 16 gig, dual channel kit of DDR4 memory at 3600 megahertz speed. We have Silicon Power Ace A55, a two and a half inch SATA SSD. To power the whole system, we have the EVGA 500 BR100. It is 80 plus bronze certified non-module power supply. To house everything, we have the Fractal Design Massified C Mini Micro ATX case. Uh, for graphics in this system, we have the Gigabyte Radio and RX 5600 XT Windforce OC cord. And we did, and I did end up putting the Hyper, the Cooler Master Hyper T4 cooler on this. If you'd like to know why I ended up putting this cooler on here for this kind of test, I'll put a link to that up here for you. All right, all. I'm going to be showing you how to do the overclocking on this CPU with this particular motherboard in this video. If you decide to do this, you take all responsibilities if there is any damage done to your components. I am not responsible if you damage your components in attempting to overclock your system. Now back to the video. All right, guys, and that's the parts that make up the system that I'm going to be running these parts on. Everything is, the RAM is ran at stock speeds. Um, the only thing I did do is add one, an extra 120 millimeter fan to that case because it had one intake and one outlet. And I ended up putting an extra 120 in the front. That way you have two intakes and one outlet. Also added in that Cooler Master Hyper T4. Because of the stock heat sink on this thing, even running at stock speed, was getting up to almost throttling point. So I figured a Hyper T4 would be better for overclocking. But now I'll show you how to how to go into your BIOS and uh, how to set up to do your overclocking. And I'll show you what kind of performance that I got at stock speeds on this processor. Let me roll you them clips and then I'll be back with my conclusion to the video. Here we got a hardware monitor set up to kind of see what's going on with the system and whatnot. And over here is uh, CPU-Z, which I pretty well match the same thing hardware monitor says about the core speed. But first we gotta get a baseline test. So let's go ahead and run uh, Cinebench R15 here. Uh, the only thing we really care about today, we don't care about the OpenGL, we don't really care about the score of the video cord. Main thing we want is the CPU. So let's run the CPU and see what we get for a baseline here. All right, looks like the baseline score, it's stock out of the box settings. We've got 1608 and Cinebench R15 here. Um, let's pull up hardware monitor here. Um, looks like the max was 100% usage on all cores, of course. And as we can see, it's been, it, the CPU, or the PBO, you know, the Precision Boost Overdrive, it actually got all the cores up to 4.193 gigahertz or 4193 megahertz so it actually got it up to about 4200 megahertz or 4.2 gigahertz which is pretty good temperatures uh, the max was only about 73c on that run so that ain't too bad all right guys now we're going to get into the overclocking since we got a base score and uh, we're going to see what kind of overclock we can get and what kind of, uh, all right all. Now since we got our base score for what uh, the 3600 is doing out of the box, we're going to jump into the BIOS here and I'm going to show you how to do the overclock and uh, I'm going to play around with it some and 
see what I kind of overclock I can get out of my system here. Alright guys, here we are in the BIOS of the motherboard. Let's hit F7 to go into the advanced mode. I'm going to go over here to AI Tweaker. Okay, this top stuff pretty well dealing with your memory. But what we're, what we're interested in is the CPU core ratio. But before we do go change any of that, we want to go into Precision Boost Overdrive. Alright guys, we want to go over here to this Precision Boost Overdrive. We want to disable this, which will disable all of this. But we want to disable this, that way we don't have the motherboard interfering with our overclocking. And we're going to go down here, we're going to find the voltage. The current voltage for the CPU is 1.312. Okay, now whenever you do your voltage on this motherboard, you can either set it manually or you can do an offset. Me, I like to do a manual one. And we're going to bump this up just a little bit here. We're going to bump this up just a little bit. We're going to do a 1.35 volt. That's going to be a little bit higher than that 1.312 that they had. And the VDDC or SOC voltage, that refers to the inputs for your memory controllers and all that. I think that 1.025 is going to be fine. Some people say to put that up to 1.1 or so. Me, we're going to try that as it is because we're mainly concerned with the CPU. Okay, we got it up to 1.35 volts right here. Okay, then we're going to go back up here to the core ratio, CPU core ratio. And this is by the times 100, what the B BCLK frequency set at 100. So whatever you type in this box, it'll be times by 100. So say if you want a 4.0 gigahertz overclock, you put in 4.0, period, and hit your enter button, which should set it up to the 4.0. But we're going to go with 4.100. And we're going to see how that goes. Okay, we're going to hit F10 for save and exit. And this here will give you a breakdown of what you changed, you know, CPU ratio is up to 41, precision boost overdrive is disabled, you, we did set a, a manual CPU voltage, and we changed it up to 1.35, okay, we're going to hit OK, and we're going to let the system reset here, and reboot, and we're going to see if it'll let us in the windows at 4.1 megahertz, or 4.1 gigahertz. Alright guys, well, looks like it did boot up. Um, let's open up CPU-Z. And while that's opening, we will open up hardware monitor as well. Okay, and they're both up to almost 4100 megahertz or 4.1 gigahertz so we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can run Cinebench R15 with the 4.1 4 that we put into it alright and right there's our last score 1608 and it's even saying here it's pushing 4.10 gigahertz so we're going to hit the run button and see if it's going to be stable enough to run this. Okay, and it was able to finish it, which of course with that overclock, it even hit a little bit lower 
than what we started out at. We started out at 1608, but that overclock it got down, it dropped down to 1601. So what was that saying? That means that the PBO is actually working better and getting you better scores with it mainly overclocking than what the 4.1 offset or the 4.1 manual overclocking is. Um, by looking at hardware monitor over here, look, we're looking at about 76 degrees Celsius. All the cores was at 100% and it was reading about the 4 point, just about around the 4.1 gigahertz or close to the 4100 megahertz speeds. Okay, and now since I showed you how to get the uh, overclock done, I'm going to do some playing here off camera and uh, I'm going to see what I can actually get this thing up to. And then uh, we'll see how see how see how high I can push the CPU, and see how high we can get that uh, Cinebench R15 score uh, bumped up there. I'll be right back, guys. All right, all. I showed you how to get that overclocking done. I showed you what my baseline was. You know the performance in Cinebench R15. Why do I use Cinebench R15? It's something that everybody knows. It's a way that you can. Compare your CPU to the 3600 if you like to to see how where yours would compare for it. And when you're overclocking, you know you need something to be able to compare it to to see how good of an improvement you're getting. I ran the hard, hardware monitor, to watch my temperatures, and to make sure that everything was uh, you know the CPU was running 100% when I stress test them, and to make sure it was getting up to the frequency that I had set in while I was overclocked. If you noticed, I haven't showed you no pictures or no video of what I was able to get out of it while I was overclocked. And there's a reason for this. I was able to get this chip all the way up to 4.5 gigahertz. Um, but at 4.5 gigahertz, it wasn't stable. Um, it wouldn't, you know, I mean, it runs Cinebench R15, which I'll show you here. And right here is the list of Cinebench scores that I got. As you can tell up here at the top, I had it running up to 4.5 gigahertz and it finished Cinebench R15 runs. I even had 14.4, I had 14.3, I had 14.2. Uh, there was the base, the base one at uh, 3.6, but it was, because of uh, PBO, it was boosting up to 4.2, got 16.08. When I uh, mainly overclocked it the first time, just to show you how to overclock, I used 4.1, and it actually came in worse than the stock speeds did. Okay, and why I didn't show you no, no numbers of what I was able to get out of the chip, because this is why I put the Hyper T4 on this system. Right here you can see it's 4199 megahertz, which is about 4.2 gigahertz. And this is after about 10 minutes stress test. You can kind of see Prime 95 running there behind it. This thing was hitting over 102 degrees, and that was at 4.2, which is what uh, PBO gets it up to by itself anyways. It don't hold it for very long, so to have this consistently run at 4.2 would be a big incline. But even with that $25, $30 heat sink, yeah, it can't hold them kind of temperatures. There it is hitting 4.5, which the temperatures was in check on this one. But it didn't run for 10 minutes either. It crashed before the 10 minutes, which means it was an unstable overclock. Okay, this one here was running at 4.4. And the same thing, after about 10 minutes, it got up to about 104, 107 degrees. And, uh, and this continuously happened. And, uh, they're running at 2.4.3. And it was hitting 100. 304 degrees and this is with the hyper t4 on okay there it is at 4.2 and it was still hitting 102 100 by 102 degrees so that's why i haven't mentioned what i'd be able to get out of this processor it looks like i should be able to get 4.4 gigahertz out of my processor with this motherboard if i put a aio on it you know a liquid cooler on it bigger air cooler on it maybe i could get up that 4.4 stable but with the Hyper T4, it just ain't possible. And if you've seen the other video that I posted about this, you know, that Hyper T4 was keeping it, you know, 10 to 12 degrees cooler than what the stock heat sink was keeping it cooler as. 
So I thought it was kind of interesting. You know, I'd like to give you a stable overclock. You know, say this is what you can put, put it to, but I can't do that. And it's mainly because I don't have the thermal headroom. The thermal headroom with the Hyper T4 just ain't enough to be able to overclock this CPU to its max potential and keep it stable and keep it cool. I hope you found this a little bit interesting, a little bit entertaining, or you know, it shows you how to get your CPU to overclock if you have enough thermal headroom to be able to do so. Unlike me, I don't have enough thermal headroom to do so. But anyways, if you like this content, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down. There's that comment section below. I go through them every weekend on Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on my live stream. And also, if you'd like to, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, links will be in the description below if you'd like to come over there and follow me. I won't give you inbox, but I do put up ideas of uh, videos coming up here on the channel or I put up photos of stuff that I've got coming in to be able to do videos with. And if you really like this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're notified next time I put out a video, I'll go live here on YouTube. And with all that being said, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.